Hello and welcome to The Motivational Midwife. My name's Lynn Jones and today we're going to look at the first of uh, three um, sessions on the newborn infant physical examination. So this is session one looking at exactly what it is and when it needs to be undertaken. So let's have a look at the NIPE examination. So NIPE is part of a national screening program and currently there's no um, NIPE national standards for, for the screening examination because there's no systematic way of measuring them. So um, although they have standards, they are based on good practice and guidance and recommended referral timescales. So until we've got a more reliable way of, of measuring and recording and reporting, um, this is what we have. And so in 2021, the, the standards and timescales were all um, re-looked at, so they're the most current ones. So when you're looking at NIPE um, as a screening programme, you should do it in conjunction with those um, standards. So the aims of the NIPE examination really is to identify children that have got some sort of congenital abnormality of uh, four key things. So eyes, hips, heart, and if it's a little boy, testes. And we're aiming to do that within 72 hours of birth. And um, certainly I know when I was um, first doing it, there used to be, if the baby doctors and paediatricians and neonatologists were undertaking the examination. They wouldn't do it before the baby was um, at least six, six hours old. But actually, there's no, there is no good evidence to support any lower limit of um, undertaking the examination. I mean, the earlier you undertake it, then potentially you're more likely to pick up things like heart murmurs because the natural physiology may not have um, fully completed at that point. Um, but there is no good evidence to to have any time frame which is the best time frame to do it as long as it's done within the 72 hours of birth um, and so uh, I was at a NIPE screening conference many years ago and this question was actually brought up uh, and their um, response was it's better to do the examination early than uh, risk a baby not being offered the um the examination the screening um because in in many areas of the country um the screening isn't undertaken before um the woman and the baby leave hospital they're asked to come back to clinics um to have it done and and there's always the risk that those babies um just won't come back to clinic so we're also aiming to identify um those abnormalities that may become detectable by the time the baby's sort of six to eight weeks. So there are some abnormalities that are not present at birth, but over the course of the, the following sort of six weeks do become apparent. And um, quite a few of the cardiac abnormalities don't actually show themselves until the baby is a little bit bigger. Um, and so it's got more circulating volume, it's growing, and therefore then the abnormality becomes more apparent. And the ultimate aim really is to reduce morbidity and mortality for those babies and the stress on the family. So when are we doing it and who's doing it? So it needs to be done initially uh, within the first 72 hours of birth. Um, and it's important that it is um, offered to everybody. Uh, a NIPE practitioner will do it. So that's either a, a midwife or a, a neonatal nurse. Um, who has undergone specific training to undertake um, this examination, or it may be one of the neonatologists that do it. 
And then it's repeated again at six to eight weeks post birth. And that's usually in the primary care setting. So more often than not, it's the GP that's doing it. And we're screening for uh, problems with the eyes. So about two to three babies per 10,000 will have some sort of uh, eye condition or eye problem that requires treatment. We're looking at problems for the heart. So about one in 200 may have a, a cardiac problem that requires treatment. And we do get lulled into a little bit of a false sense of security with the heart because they've had scans uh, at 20 weeks and that's shown that everything's fine. But actually scans only pick up about 50% of cardiac um, anomalies. So don't get too lulled into a false sense of security with that one. Um, we're looking at uh, problems with the hips. So about one or two babies per thousand will have a problem that requires treatment. And then if it's a little boy, uh, one in a hundred babies will have some sort of problem with uh, a testes, undescended testes that will require treatment. So it's important that parents are given information before the NIP examination is offered to them. And antenatally, they are given the screening tests for you and your baby booklet. And most women kind of look at the bits at the front, but they don't look at the bits at the back, which is where all those screening tests for the baby, so about hearing screening and the NIPE are um, in there. So it's, it's uh, and also the newborn blood spot, all of those things tend to be more towards the back of the booklet. And so it's important that we do signpost women uh, and their families to that section of the booklet so they can actually uh, make themselves, familiarise themselves with what is on offer. And you can, I believe, get the booklet in different languages as well. So if English is not their first language, um, then um, you can perhaps access that for them. Or ultimately, particularly if the test is being done in hospital, then you may need to use interpreting services to make sure they fully understand what the screening test involves and what it's um, what it's looking for. It's important that parents understand the difference between screening and diagnostic. So screening is only looking for the essentially the chances of there being a problem. And if um, that screening uh, seems to suggest there is a problem, then the babies would need to be referred for more diagnostic. So something that will actually say, yes, there definitely is a problem or actually, no, there isn't. Parents also have the right to decline. Remember, all parents have um, and individuals have the right to decline treatment. They can decline uh, all or part of the NIPE. It's important that we document in the appropriate uh, pathways that they've been offered the test, that they, they understand what the screening is about, um, and they've chosen to decline um, the screening part or all of it and document their reasons for declining. It's um, important to say that the baby will remain eligible for screening up until it's six weeks old um, and so it will be offered again at six to eight weeks and it's important that contact details are left with the parents should they decide to change their mind and, and have that screening done at a later date. Uh, it's important to think about babies, uh, particularly the six to eight week ones that maybe move into the area um, because obviously if they've had their initial screening in a different area, um, that area, it's their responsibility to hand over to the receiving care provider um, anything about the screening and it's important then the person that's responsible is the current care provider for ensuring that that uh, baby is offered the six to eight week screening. Um, and key for everything obviously is we need to have consent uh, and it's verbal consent from the parents that they are happy to go ahead with this screening either all or part. So all babies are eligible um, to be offered screening if the baby is preterm. Um, uh, so any babies that are in uh, special care for any reason, um, there is a separate booklet um, on you screening for you and your baby, but specifically for babies who are in special care baby units or neonatal units. So babies born before 34 weeks, um, the screening will generally be delayed until they are 34 weeks. Um, corrected age. 
Uh, again, the baby continues to remain eligible for the NIP screening and the examination should be performed as soon as the baby is either old enough or well enough. If the baby is too ill for screening, uh, then the screening will be delayed, but we just need to make sure we've documented the reason um, on the appropriate um, documentation as to why the screening has been delayed. And so if we get what's called a screen negative result, that means there's no problems that we've picked up. Um, you can inform the parents that you haven't found anything that warrants any further action at that point, and then they will get uh, a repeat um, in their primary care setting, as they most commonly with the GP, at six to eight weeks old. Um, screen positive means that you have found something that, that may warrant um, going forward. So um, you need to inform the parents of your findings and then follow whichever referral process that is required um, for whatever it is you've um, picked up, be it a problem with the eyes or the hips or the heart or the um, testes. And give the parents an idea of the expected appointment timescales for that. And certainly we'll go into that in um, the second of this series of videos. We'll go into each bit in a little bit more detail and look at the timescales that are ideally um, recommended. And then all findings should be documented in the if NIP Smart system, which is a, a, a national system, or the GP um, system, or the uh, child health record, um, or and also whatever local data systems and child records that you have within your own trust. And there you have it, part one of the NIP examination. Um, I hope you found it useful. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. And I look forward to seeing you next time on part two.